And uh, thank you, Sharon. And our last speaker on the panel, and then we'll take questions after this, is, uh, and I hope I pronounced this right, Devora. Close. <laughs> uh, Kestel. Uh, she is uh, at the uh, Pan American Health Organization, has been there since 2007, is the regional mental health advisor, uh, is based here in Washington, D.C., but if you look at her biography in the uh, book, you'll see that she's done a lot of work in other countries uh, working on uh, community mental health systems and trying to establish them. Uh, so we welcome you and uh, look forward to your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, the organizer. It is uh, uh, a pleasure and it's uh, an opportunity to be here, having the possibility to share a bit of information with uh, a basically a, a American audience, which is something that is not so frequently happening to us. I have one advantage or two, let's say I start by complaining. One is that I have to talk about an, a big number of countries, and I will try to do it in, in a short period of time. And the second one is that English is not my mother tongue, so if I speed up, I risk that you won't understand half of what I say, so I have to try to slow down. So good luck. And uh, um, uh, we, we start a bit just to give a, uh, yesterday Tom uh, uh, Insel said that uh, he likes uh, uh, this information about the global uh, burden of disease and we use it a lot to put some evidence around the burden of uh, mental health. Um, globally, we know that now after the data that came out uh, last year, depression is the number uh, 11th cause of disability globally. The uh, non-communicable diseases contributes to 54% of the total uh, uh, burden of disease, and mental health is the most, and, and neurological disorders actually are the, the biggest contributor to that. If we look at the situation in, in our region, in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, in terms of uh, dailies, we have around 14% of uh, dailies uh, related to mental health and neurological disorders. And if we look only at the years lost due to disability, we have uh, almost uh, 35%. Now, uh, we are, I'm going to present now a bit of data that has been taken from uh, an assessment instrument that we applied to 34 countries, and these are the ones that are published. There are three or four that are uh, also um, uh, being done and, and on its way to uh, publishing. Those uh, collect 155 indicators, and don't worry, I'm not going to present all that data, but with, what is interesting is that is uh, the only tool we have that is allowing a comparison among those countries of the region. Um, the data you will see is, uh, is coming from that, except this one, sorry. And this is what we are using mainly when we go to the countries and we try to advocate for mental health. We use, on one hand, the burden of disease, on the other hand, we use the treatment gap, which means from those as, um, uh, people who suffer from uh, serious mental disorders, there is a big percentage of them that do not receive any kind of treatment. And the percentages are really scary. We talk about, um, with the data, uh, a study that was done uh, by the end of last year, collecting, it's a meta-analysis, collecting the epidemiological studies done in Latin America and the Caribbean countries, we know that almost 57% uh, of people with schizophrenia do not receive any kind of treatment. And the percentages go up, up to, uh, for instance, uh, people with alcohol use disorder with 85% not receiving any treatment. When I go to countries, I ask uh, authorities of the Ministry of Health how many people with a broken leg do not receive any treatment. So this is something that is a main problem we still have. Uh, we, we know globally that there is insufficiency of uh, mental health resources. When we look at the, at the world median, we have less than 30% of the health public budget dedicated to mental health. And when we look at the situation in in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, we know that between a 70% sorry, 73% of the countries have a budget, a public uh, a budget dedicated to mental health that goes between 1% and 5%. So the majority of the countries dedicate from their public budget uh, 
less than 5% of it to mental health. We, uh, I remind you that the global uh, burden, the dailies in, in Latin America is the 14%, the budget is of around 3%. And we, uh, I emphasize the issue of the uh, public budget because we have to keep in mind the difference between uh, most of the countries of the region and the US in terms of who is funding services. 73% huh? have one to five percent of their health budget? Or Dedicated to mental health, budget? correct. Health budget. The health budget. The, 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 73% of countries, countries, not uh, population-based, these countries, um, dedicate less than 5% of their health budget to mental health expenditure. Yep. Now, the um, even more scary situation is that from those monies dedicated to mental health, 88% goes to mental hospitals. So that it means that there is around 12% of the available resources in the community. Okay? We talk also about inequity because of the concentration of mental health resources. Uh, globally, there is uh, one psychiatrist or less to serve 200,000 people or more. Yesterday, uh, I don't recall who mentioned that there is here in the U.S. a problem of um, lack of psychiatrists, right? And look at the no, yeah, look at the color, and compare with other country with other colors. We have here again in in the region uh, in the in the 34 countries that we have. Uh, uh, incorporated in this in this study, uh, we have that there is around two psychiatrists per hundred thousand population in this region, and uh, the number of nursing uh, you you should not uh, it's a bit misleading because in the, in uh, Montserrat that is a, a Caribbean island a UK territory. It's a population of 5,000 people, and there are seven nurses, general nurses. None of them are the health nurses, but because there is no mental health uh, staff, the general nurses work in mental health. So uh, we look at the, at the uh, data there, and it goes well uh, beyond the average. But if you look at the situation in Central America and South America, the number of nurses uh, is very, very limited. And it goes down to others, with the exception of South America in uh, psychology, that there are a few countries with an incredibly high number of uh, psychologists. Otherwise, the number of professionals is very limited. Now, the problem, again, is where are those people working? And what we, you can see in, uh, in green uh, is the, uh, are the, the mental hospitals, the psychiatric hospitals, and is where most of the people work. So there is a very small percentage of uh, mental health professionals working in um, psychiatric units in general hospitals. That would be the red color. And uh, in blue are the what we call uh, um, ambulatory services, whatever is out there in the community, at the community level. That's uh, the, the blue color. So the majority of the professionals are in, uh, concentrated in mental hospitals. We talk also about inefficiency. Globally, we know that 62% of psychiatric beds are located in mental hospitals. When we look at the situation in, in our region, it's even worse. We have uh, the total of 86.6% of psychiatric beds located in mental hospitals. So yesterday, uh, from the morning uh, video we saw, it was some discussion around the problem of beds. And of course, we know that beds is not the solution. But when the bed, the only ser services available are mental hospitals, which means beds, basically, and are concentrated there, and, and there is uh, almost nothing out there, then the situation is really uh, to worry about. There are 10% um, of those beds in uh, general hospitals, in, in psychiatric uh, units in general hospitals, and uh, as little as 2.7% in uh, community uh, housing. Huh? of any kind. Now, um, again, this is a very um, uh, weak, if we can say, uh, data. We are presenting here the, where, are the, where are the patients, where do they go? And, and what I'm saying is a bit 
weak is because uh, the, the, the data collection system in the countries is uh, very, very weak. So you have places where uh, you, you don't know if uh, the number of uh, um, uh, here, for, uh, for example, uh, sorry, here, we don't know if these are actual patients or are simply contacts. But nevertheless, this is what we have and what we collect, uh, we have collected from countries. And what we see is that, uh, take any of these uh, regions, uh, uh, we have 70%, um, sorry, 70.72 people or contacts made in mental hospitals. The same mental hospitals that have 88% of the budget, 60% of the people, the staff working there, etc. And so for all these uh, 1,300 people or contacts, there is very little available out there. Hmm? So although we know that the, these uh, figures are not so precise, still I think that they give an example of, of the situation. We um, also have been trying to see what's the situation in terms of uh, policies and plans. We, uh, we know that 60% uh, of the countries have a mental health policy, 67% have a mental health plan, and are separated because depending on the region, whether it's the English-speaking Caribbean or Latin America, is different whether they will go for a policy or for a plan. The, the more, most important thing is that when in another survey we asked countries uh, in terms of their implementation, around one-third of the countries are implementing some of these policies. So uh, that's unfortunately a situation is there are very nicely written documents that frequently stay there in a shelf or in a drawer. Um, in terms of the legislation, the situation is uh, even, even worse, although a, a lot has happened uh, during the last uh, years, but oh, I, I see that I lost the, the data. Those are the uh, actual uh, number of countries and what we had um, by the time this uh, information was compiled, that only six countries in our region had a mental health legislation that was uh, uh, drafted after the year 2000. So we are talking about most of the countries of the region that have or no legislation, or the legislation is so outdated that will not consider any of the international uh, agreed conventions or standards that will protect and promote the rights of uh, mentally ill. We have even the, the, the oldest is in, in one uh, island, uh, in a Caribbean island, the UK territory, that uh, have a, they have a law of uh, 1904 named a Lunatic Act. So you can imagine what's that law about. Now, um, before, before showing this, let me tell that, uh, and we were discussing with with uh, Colleen before, uh, there are nice things happening also in the region. Not everything is so terrible. There are countries that have done great efforts. There are small realities that are doing enormous progress. But when we look at the big picture, this is the, this is the result still, unfortunately. You know, we, we hope that the balance will, will move uh, soon on the other direction. In order to perhaps, um, uh, help uh, countries uh, create some awareness or raise attention around these issues, we as WHO and the Pan American Health Organization keep issuing documents where you look at the documents over the years and resolutions and ministers of health signing some of it. It's a bit like uh, we are still saying the same huh? because there is still a lot to do. And although the colleague was mentioning before the, the alcohol uh, um, um, policy issued by, by WHO in 2010, and we have here these things. We have no power to make countries do things. Uh, we, we, we recommend, and it's already a big achievement when you have 194 countries, ministers, signing on something and agreeing. And when I say, in, in the case of PAHO, it goes from Canada and the US, we are preparing an updated version of a regional mental health action plan that will be aligned with the mental health global action plan that was issued last year uh, by the World Health Organization. And, and I spent, believe me, a lot of time these past days trying to integrate each single comment from the US, from Canada, 
from each of the uh, countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, everybody has a say. So it is important, but of course, then that has to become a practice. And uh, I don't know how you say it in English, but from what is uh, what you say to what you do is a long way to go, right? Del dicho al hecho hay mucho trecho para los que me entienden. Okay. Uh, so these are two uh, documents, and those are the priorities that uh, both are, are, are uh, focusing on, is uh, leadership and governance, mental health and social care services. We are talking a lot because of the lack of resources and because of the burden and the enormous amount of people with uh, mental health uh, issues at any time in their life, is that we believe, we strongly believe that mental health specialists will never be enough to deal with the problem. So schools welcome a, a promotion and prevention initiatives, but also we are working very hard trying to integrate mental health into the general health system in primary health care level and by uh, professionals that could learn basic things to deal, to identify and deal with mental health, uh, people with mental health problems. So um, I, I'm, I'm very uh, stressed by the limits and so on, so I have to rush. Um, now, I was asked to present this uh, summary of the situation when we talk on the phone, but also it was written in the message, uh, you, I have to tell whether services are well positioned to prevent violence and take care of victims uh, and perpetrators. You can see the answer, you have it. I don't have to say it, I think. Not only that, uh, also about disasters, also about specific uh, vulnerable groups needs. Are they well prepared? Okay. Um, so I'm not, uh, I, I have to keep, I always be politically correct. I'm not saying it. Uh, then opportunities for intervention, plenty of them. You name it. You name it and it's gonna be a place where it's gonna be welcome. We talked yesterday a lot about violence and the problem of whether it is mentally ill being violent or ment uh, the system or the, the societies being violent against mentally ill. This is what we believe that is violence for us. In most of the countries, this is violence, a lady and in an institution. And this is what we work for, to change that situation. This is the violence we are trying now to focus on. Thank you very much.